What's up guys, Thirsty Dog here, back with probably, and I may have said this already before, but definitely the finale of Kaladesh, especially since, uh, I don't know if you are a patron of Elephant Investments on Patreon, but his latest deal for his patrons on Patreon were boxes of Kaladesh, so of course since I am a patron and, patron and wanted to help support some more. Went ahead and bought some boxes from Rudy, and here we are. Let's go ahead and open it and go through it relatively quickly. Don't want to take too much time. I want you guys, while you enjoy boxes, I know that sometimes it can take quite a while, so I'm just going to go ahead and do the rares for all these. So I'm also sure that you guys are pretty aware of uh, what all the commons and uncommons already do, so. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go on to the first rare. Got ourselves a deadlock trap. Three drop, enters a battlefield tap, gets two energy. Any can pay energy to tap a creature or a planeswalker and shut off its activated abilities. We also got a foil, harsh scrutiny. I still have not organized my Kaladesh yet, so I wanted to definitely get this one done sooner or later. Stuff sitting out for quite a while, which I'm not a fan of. Oh, and we have our first dual land, Spire Above Canal. Red and blue, of course. Fast land cycle. Legacy. One and two black sorcery. You name a non artifact, non land card. They see extracted from their hand, graveyard, and library. But then they also get to draw a card for each card that's up from hand. And we have a foil forest. That's cool. Lost Legacy over there. I also have not opened a single invention out of all the stuff I've opened so far, so really hoping to have a surprise there. Got ourselves a Marionette Master, 4 and 2 black. Human Artificer or Creature, 1 3 with Fabric 3. And whenever a artifact goes through the graveyard, their opponent loses life equal to Marionette Master's power. Could be a fun build with the new uh, Tezzeret they spoiled in the Revolt so far, the one that's actually in the set. But a lot of people are not super happy with his design, but also at the same time, not everyone wants to see broken Planeswalker. So, with Key to the City, 2 drop, you have to tap it, discard a card, and prevent a creature from being able to block. And also, when it comes to untapped, P2 to draw a card. Operating. It's always fun having that happen. And we have our first mythic. It's an angel invention. This one actually might be considerable once starts 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 rotating, especially because it's fabricate. And it's also pumping your creatures as well. It also has flying vigilance lifelink for a three two white two one angel. Pretty sweet. Not a money mythic, but hopefully a powerful card. Probably underrated at this point. Oh, and we have another mythic right away. This time it's Metallurgic Summonings. This one is uh, the three and two blue enchantment that pumps out construct artifact creature tokens whenever you cast a spell and XX based on the spell's mana cost. You can also pay three and two blue to exile it and return all instant sorcery cards from a giver to your hand. But you can only do it if you have six artifacts. But if you have a lot of spells, that's probably not going to be a problem. A 
gear per ori for a drop that lets you the artifact lets you play additional land on each of your turns including your opponents and then at the beginning of each player's upkeep if that player has no cards in hand they draw three cards that's a strange one that sees absolutely no play in any format that i'm aware of Fleetwill Cruiser for the rare. Four drop vehicle, 5 3, it also has trample and haste. It also becomes an artifact creature when it first comes out. And if, beyond that, it's Crew 2. We have a foil thriving turtle. So it's a P and a Lar for the rare, another foil binder. Two and a red, two, two, legendary creature, human artificer. She pumps out a 1-1 one, one Thopter when she comes out on the battlefield. You can also pay one and a red to pump a target artifact creature, plus one, plus zero. You can also pay one and second artifact to prevent a creature from blocking this turn. And a foil Inventor's Apprentice. Obviously, really good and common in the aggro deck. And a multi form wonder of this time. Five drop, three, three construct creature artifact, of course. You get three energy when it comes out. You just pay energy to give it. Flying Vigilance or Life Link until on a turn, or to give it plus two, minus two, or minus two, plus two. Looks like we have a foil right behind there. We have a Blooming Marsh, Fast Land. Green or black, and then our foil rare is a wireless dreams. XX green, return X target cards from your graveyard to your hand. Exile wireless dreams. We got ourselves a syndicate trafficker, one drop, or one and a black drop, that is. 3 1 creature. Or you can also pay one two second artifact to put a plus one plus one counter on it and give it indestructible. We got ourselves a bow mat carrier, a little hasty one drop that's 1 1. It's also an artifact creature, of course. And you exile the top card of your library face down when it attacks. You can also pay one red and discard your hand. Also, sacrifice it to put all those cards in your hand that you've exiled. And we also have ourselves a foil propeller pioneer. So the last new Hellion. 4-4 four, four for 2 and a red. It also has haste, that's awesome. And it's definitely great in an uh, energy build around deck. Because you get 2 energy when it comes out, but then you have to pay 2 energy at your end step. Otherwise you have to sack it. Come on, pack.
Oh, got ourselves another mythic, and it's a Planeswalker, and it's Sahili Rai. The questionable Planeswalker in many, people, in many people's mind, but we'll see. I'm sure she's going to see some marginal play here and there. One blue-red. Comes out at three loyalty. Plus ability to scry one, and also do one damage to each opponent. Minus two, create a token that's a copy of target artifact or creature you control, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. That token gains haste. And then you exile at the beginning of the next end step. Her ultimate is search your library for up to three artifact cards with different names. And then put them on the battlefield. So that's pretty insanely powerful, the whole tutor up three artifacts and put them straight to the battlefield. Time the rares an insidious will. The counter spell two and two blue. Do you get to choose one though? You have a counter target spell, or choose new targets for target spell, or a carp copy target instant or sorcery spell, and you may choose new targets for that copy. Already right, got ourselves three mythics in the full rare, so. Probably won't be seeing a whole lot of exciting things <laughs> beyond now, but this time we see a, a Campbell or Kambal, Console of Allocation. One right black, two three, a legendary human advisor. And whenever an opponent casts a non creature spell, that plays, player loses two life and you gain two life. I like him a lot. Especially against control. Unless he just dies right away. Another fast land, a concealed courtyard for white or black. I think we got three of these, three of those fast lands so far, I believe. At least three. This time we got a Metalwork Colossus. I'd like to see him played more often. 10 10 for 11, but he also costs X less to cast, where X is the total converted mana cost of non creature artifacts you control. You can also sack the artifacts to return to your hand from your graveyard. Of course, the problem with him is you need to figure out a way to get his damage through. Which you can with the, uh, the one equipment that gives stuff trample and haste, but uh, I've never really seen anybody play him with that equipment. Next pack is a Skyship Stalker, 2 and 2 red, 3 3 flyer, dragon. You have to pay a red to you, either give it plus 1 plus 0 then a turn, or a first strike, or haste. Fast land. <clears throat> it's a pretty good box for fast land so far. Botanical Sanctum. Green or blue. Ooh, and we have another mythic. Um, it's a noxious gear hulk. Four and two black, five four with menace. Artifact creature, and you get to destroy a target creature when it comes to play, and gain life equal to its toughness. And I foil Narnum Cobra. Still got quite a bit left. Already got our average number of mythics here. Fateful Showdown. What are the story cards? Two and two red, instant. Does damage to a creature or player equal to the number of cards in your hand? Then discard all cards in your hand and draw that many cards. So this could be. Well, I haven't seen anybody try it yet, but. Sort of a blue red control could be pretty cool with that card. 
or Grixis, whatever. Something along those lines. Oh, what, another Mythic? Alright, that's sweet. Five so far. A Cataclysmic Girl Hulk. Three and two whites. Four or five. Vigilance. Artifact Creature Construct. Makes player, each player choose an artifact creature enchantment and planeswalker and sacrifice for the rest. Okay. Neither of those are the big guys that are actually being used, but still the Gear Hulks nonetheless. The Fumigate. Three and two whites to destroy creatures and gain one life for each creature to serve this way. So a pretty cool wrath, despite the slight added cost. Most people don't think the upside is worth it, but you aren't gonna see the same power of war cards we used to, so. Got ourselves a Dapala this time. Pilot Exemplar. One red, white, blue, three, three, legendary dwarf pilot. She's a dwarf lord, so she has all your doors, plus one, plus one, and as well as vehicles. This is lungs or creatures, which I guess that's the only time it's relevant. And then whenever she becomes tapped, you may pay X, and if you do, reveal top X cards of your library and put all dwarf and vehicle cards from among them in your hand. Put the rest in the bottom in a random order. ourselves an authority of the consoles the one white enchantment <clears throat> forces your opponents to come there are creatures that your opponents control to come into play tapped and then whenever a creature enters a battlefield under your opponent's control you gain a life So it's a Master Trinketeer, Dwarf Artificer, two and one white, three, two. Dwarf and Mythopter Lord, three and a white to pump out a one, one servo. Not Dwarf Lord, Servo Lord. Getting my lordships between Dapala and the Trinketeer mixed up. Oh boy. Finally it happened. I don't know if you just saw a sneak peek there, but then we have a territorial gorger. Who cares about that? Painter's servant. <laughs> well, at least we got a uh, a masterpiece. It's only a painter's servant, but I'm excited nonetheless. Kind of threw that a little too high. Disrespectful to the Territorial Gorger, but you know what that guy does. I'm definitely more excited about this one. I actually haven't really seen these in person yet, because I haven't pulled one. So the foiling's interesting. It's got a cool effect to it, but then if you look at the card, it's got a weird texture into it. I guess it's similar to uh, the uh, Expeditions. But the shininess isn't really apparent in like the middle of the card. The border is very shiny, but the rest of it's not. That's pretty weird. I don't know if you can pick that up on the cap, that shot. Yeah, you can kind of tell from that shot right there with my light directly on it. No, oh, it's pretty bizarre. But awesome. Finally able to pick one up. I don't know if you can hear that beeping in the background, but if you, if you can, it's people outside doing work on my street. Got another Midnight Oil. I've already seen that one, so I'm not going to read it again.
time we have a Bedeem Council of Invocation or Innovation, sorry. Three and a blue, one four, legendary Vidalcan artificer creature. Artifacts you control have hexproof. <clears throat> At the beginning of your upkeep, if you control the artifact with the highest converted mana cost or tide, you draw a card. Probably going to be a piece in a blue black artifact control based type deck if it ever becomes a thing, which probably won't be anytime soon. And another mythic. This box is pretty awesome. This time we have a Sky Sovereign Console flagship. Six mythics and a masterpiece. So this is a five drop artifact vehicle. 6-5 flying and it deals damage through damage to target creature or planeswalker when it attacks or comes in the battlefield. And this crew cost is three. So three packs left. I would be shocked if anything crazy good was in here, but still gotta check them out anyways. Got Aether Storm Rock. Pretty good bird. Two and two white, three three flyer. And it comes into play, or another creature comes into play, you get an energy counter. And then when it attacks, you may pay two energy, and if you do, you put a plus one plus one counter on it and tap up to one target creature defending player controls. Aether Flux Reservoir, cool card, 4 drop, you gain a health every time you cast a spell, so you gain 1 life for each spell you cast this turn that is, so it builds up 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth, you also pay 50 life to deal 50 damage to a creature or player, we also have a foil, fortuitous find. <clears throat> All right, our last pack. Let's see what uh, likely bulk we pull in this one. This time it's a Architect of the Untamed. Not terrible. Two and a green, two, three. An elf Artificer Druid. You get a energy whenever a land comes into play. But then you could pay, uh, what is this, eight energy to get make a 6-6 six, six Beast Artifact creature token. Just realize it's an artifact. That's weird. I guess she is an artificer, so that makes sense. So, real quick, <laughs> to go over what we got here in this box, Rudy definitely treats me well with his boxes here. Apparently, we got six mythics. We got the uh, Big Daddy flagship, two Gear Hulks. Angel of Invention for the creature. That's not an artifact. Metallurgic Summonings, Enchantment, and a Sahili Rai. So overall the Mythics are not too shabby. Not the best though. But, you know, six of them is pretty sweet. And then of course we got our Masterpiece finally. Still just staring at it because it looks really awesome. Luckily, it appears to be in pretty good condition, too. There's always some concern with that. With these more valuable cards, although this one in particular, I don't think is worth that much. I, if I had to guess, like 20 bucks, maybe. I could be completely off by that, but I don't really ever see there being demand for that guy. And then I think we got four fast lands total, but... uh. Yeah, pretty cool stuff, and the uh, full rare was nothing too great, but it was a Wildest Dreams. So that's cool, too. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. This is definitely going to be my last Kalish box, especially now that we got our, uh, our Masterpiece. A little uh, fun hunt for one of those. Hoping to have some better luck with Aether Revolt. You know, being able to pull more than one would be really, really awesome, although I'm sure highly unlikely. 
I had some pretty good luck with Oath of the Gay Watch with uh, Expedition, so I don't think I'm ever going to match that sort of luck with uh, pulling these bombs. But uh hope you guys enjoyed this video. As, you, as always, please go ahead and like and subscribe if you aren't already subscribed to see more stuff like this. I'm definitely trying to put out some more stuff recently now that I have some more time and some more resources to put forth towards the channel again. And I hope you guys have a good day. Catch you later.